Peace and love, family. I greet you in the words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. Hotep. Alafia. And as always, race first. This episode of Garveyism Versus will be dealing with Garveyism versus the vote, the Garveyite perspective on political participation. Many question whether Black nationalists or Garveyites are supposed to vote. As a matter of fact, um, the Council of Eight during the Garvey Must Go campaign, in their letter to the Attorney General, suggested that Garvey told his uh, members to not vote. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at how true that could be. First of all, we must understand that the U.S. political system currently is four wings, the same insect. So once we go in knowing this, we can move forward. Just like people see say it's two wings of the same bird, the reality of it is we have Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, and Green Party, whom we must pay attention to and watch carefully because these were not created by us. So they must always be put in a context when dealing with black nationalism. Moving forward, voter registration without voter education is a waste of time. This is a quote from Malcolm X. You must understand, if we don't know the system, we cannot successfully play within the system. Moving forward. Again, you see the illusion of free choice. Generally, they give you the left and the right, uh, Democrats versus Republicans. And you see here that it's leading to the same slaughterhouse. Black nationalism encourages voter red education, understanding that politics equals a slaughterhouse for our people. So we must navigate it skillfully, knowing offices and their duties, as well as the history of proposed candidates, ultimately putting forth our own candidates that we build up and have the nationalist mindset so they can effectively work from behind the wall. And you see the brother on the ladder right there, representing Adam Clayton Powell Jr., <laughs> setting up his own way over the wall, understanding that the other side is definitely a slaughterhouse and just bringing back the things that are necessary to our people moving forward. This is Garvey speaking about voting. Let's see what he says. They have tried to misrepresent us and make out that we have no voting strength. The liars that they are. We have won many an election in New York, Cincinnati, Detroit, Cleveland, Los Angeles, Chicago, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what? I could have swore that they said that Garvey told his people to not vote. So how is that the case when we've won elections? by silently lending our help without any desire to take credit for anything done. You see this here, it is a very public speech, speech at a local convention. Here on the other side, the second circle to the right, it says, have become interested in politics. We have become interested in politics of our respective communities because it is the science of government that protects those human rights that are not protected by law. When justice fails you, there is but one reasonable and rational resort, and that is to the political readjustment of the community in which you live and the reorganization of the machinery that deprives the community of that justice. The medium for exercising your political opinion is the ballot box. Hence, it becomes necessary for every Negro to make up his mind and do the right thing by himself during the approaching changes. Now, make up his mind, meaning, and do the right thing, meaning vote in the interest of your people. If perchance there is not a candidate that's in the interest of your people, there's nobody to vote for. Moving forward. Here is an example of one of those elections that he was just talking about. Uh, here in Buffalo, New York, our sister, Lady President Rosa Montgomery, was uh, quoted to be the first African-American woman to be in be become involved in Buffalo politics. She was involved in nominating the first black man to run for city supervisor here in Buffalo, who was uh, African Legion Captain Howard B. Phillips. All right, so we were involved in politics as early as 1920, all the way up till 1925, you see here. Moving forward, the Declaration of Rights and Negro Peoples of the World, one of the governing documents of the UNIAACL, tells you in 
Declaration number 10, we protest against segregated districts, separate public conveyances, industrial discrimination, lynchings, and what? Limitations of political privileges. This was written in 1920 and voted on by 20,000 Africans from over 40 different countries around the world. Voted on that we do not get down with limitations on our political privileges, no matter where we are domiciled. Here is another example to the right, Gary speaking. In the case of Negroes unable to elect a president of their own, I am throwing support for Alfred Smith. Now, he's, I'm not even sure of the politics of Alfred Smith right now, but you see here, Garvey is telling you that he is throwing his support for Alfred Smith. And he definitely gives you a reason why Hoover was one of the men responsible for sending him to prison, all right? And he could back, he backed Firestone in Liberia during the treacherous deals that uh, W.E.B. Du Bois created. All right, moving forward. Garvey also created the People's Political Party, which was Jamaica's first, it doesn't say third or 10th, it says Jamaica's first modern political party, formed in September 1929. 14 point, point manifesto included an eight hour workday, minimum wage, land reform, the city status, all right? These things were a part of this is a part of Jamaica's history, but it's also a part of UNIA ACL history. So we cannot forget that Garvey never told his people to not vote. He was telling people to vote in your own interests, specifically in your own community. Here we have Malcolm X. Where is he? He's at a Marcus Garvey Day celebration, where he's, he's quoted as saying, Garvey had the feeling of the black man at heart. The political philosophy of black nationalism only means that the black man should control the politics and the politicians in his own community. And the politicians in his own community. Because when that white man comes to, and he sends a Negro into the community to get him, to get us to vote for him, huh? that leads us astray. Black nationalism is a self-help philosophy. Why? Because it eliminates the necessity for division and argument. Where did he get that from? You see here at the bottom, his Garveyite parents. Uh, bonus fact, unfortunately, um, Baba Earl Little, um, Malcolm X's father, was actually killed by a, a white militia group back in uh, 1931 mm -hmm. for being a Garveyite. Moving forward. You hear um, Malcolm X in his uh, in the autobiography told Alex Haley that he'd think about retiring if we had 10 men like Adam Clayton Powell in office. How do you get men like Clayton Powell in office if not voting them in office? Adam Clayton Powell Sr., the parent of Adam Clayton Powell Jr. wrote of Marcus Garvey, he is the only man that made Negroes not feel ashamed of their color. So you see all of these ideas and ideals and ideologies come out of the UNIA ACL government of the world. Gary told us that the Universal Negro Improvement Association needs to stand together and be as one man. They have tried to misrepresent us and make out that we have no voting strength, the liars that they are. Garveyism is not against the vote or against political participation. Garveyism is black nationalism and unification is a must. So I leave you with one God, one aim, one destiny. And as always, race first. We must understand the politics of our community and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. We must know what part politics play in our lives. And until we become politically mature, we will always be misled, led astray, or deceived or maneuvered into uh, supporting someone politically who doesn't have the good of our community at heart. So the political philosophy of black nationalism only means that we will have to carry on a program, a political program of re-education to open our people's eyes, make us become more politically conscious, politically mature. And then we will, whenever we get ready to cast our ballot, that ballot will be, classed for, uh, will be cast for a man of the community who has the good of the community at heart. 